We're back and it felt so good. Despite the shortcomings of last week, this episode brought it back in force with only a few minors on my list of boxes to tick. I won't lie though, this show still has much to prove for me until the conclusion of the Bad Batch, which I do still feel is a bit of a ridiculous decision to try and put them up head to head. And while they go head to head, and are actively dividing the fanbase right now with some astonishing and groundbreaking movements in the Bad Batch, and Mando possessing such a dedicated audience behind it that believe this is the way for Star Wars, we won't reach a decisive winner until both have concluded. Fair enough. See you around. I have a few thoughts about this week's episode, and I'm excited to tell you what they are, so let's get straight into the breakdown and I'll give you what I think after. We begin on Tatooine, which is steadily becoming a tiresome fucking sight, where we see Pelimoto doing some questionable shit as usual, when Mando turns up looking for a part to fix IG-11 from the Jawas. They don't have the parts, so Peli suggests using R5 and retrofitting the N1 to accompany his size. <laughs> Mando agrees to this and takes off for Mandalore. When they arrive, Mando sends R5 to check out the atmosphere and to track the location of where the mines might be. As they're looking at the scopes, R5 quickly disappears, so this forces Mando to go find him. Mando sets off on a spelunking mission and is attacked by Almites, native creatures to the deserts of Mandalore, and makes extremely short work of them but still shows visible resistance with the Darksaber. After this, he locates R5 and they determine the air isn't toxic, so Din and Grogu set off to traverse the mines down below. When they arrive, Din becomes distracted and gets caught by a mechanical creature and taken off to its lair. Bad touch! Bad touch! Stranger danger! Grogu tries to free Din but is instead instructed to go back and retrieve Bo and hesitantly does just that. Grogu quickly makes it back to Bo and she agrees to rescue Din begrudgingly, now being forced to confront the planet that she strived to stay away from for so long. Bo and Grogu then quickly walk the same path as Din and Grogu did not 10 minutes ago, but Bo is able to locate him pretty quickly through her awareness of the land around her and Grogu's handy finger points. When she finds him, she engages the creature and after a couple of switch-ups in its body, she destroys it and frees Din. When he awakens, he thanks her and says that he'll rejoin her efforts, but he needs to locate the waters first. She agrees to help him locate them and takes him directly to their location. Oh, how convenient! Where Mando wastes little time getting naked and quickly descends into the waters, unaware of how fucking deep it was. Bo wastes no time diving in and flying right after him, but as she reaches him at the bottom of the pool, we see the full scope of its size and realise exactly why it's called the Living Waters, with the revelation that the Mythosaur is alive. This freaks the fuck out of Bo, who zips off out of there, and we close on them trying to catch their breath and come to terms with what they've just witnessed. This was an undeniable improvement over last week's slog of an episode, and I have a few issues regarding the series' debut in its animation, dialogue, and plot progression slash pacing, but this week more than made up for it and made good on the promise of the critics, that said it was a concentrated lore-based instalment that would incite the nostalgia and deliver for longtime fans of the Mandalore and its various tribes, creeds, and communities. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. There was an intense focus to this week's instalment that was still amusing for the fact that Din was just chasing a giant pull to bathe in, but I respect the cultural significance to this for his character, and despite the shift in her beliefs, Bo was forced into experiencing a reawakening on this adventure thanks to Grogu as well. The ideological disparity that separates Din and Bo has been one of the vocal points that fans have been fascinated with, and experiencing the sight of a living mythosaur under the surface of Mandalore will no doubt shake the dust off of Bo's beliefs who essentially denounced her religion due to the losses that she endured, but from Mando, this will only strengthen his resolve as the Creed maintains its devotion to the Way and bear the insignia of its skull. I love what this could do for the remainder of the series, and how this encounter could truly unify the Mandalorians that are spread throughout the galaxy once more. Plus, with the Empire gone, they could at least terraform the lands and begin to rebuild on the remnants of Sundari. I'm interested in particular as to how this will affect Bo and how she responds 
response to the situation. Wielding the Darksaber again absolutely had to turn a light on inside her head, then being confronted with essentially a living deity would shake even the strongest of wills, and as the one that had ruled the planet once before and is chasing that title once again, she's found herself again, even pushing Din towards the waters to get his support. My feeling over her character right now is that she's got to have an effective, decisive and conclusive arc over the season that wraps up in a resounding way, which should be possible now with Din stepping up on the promise of supporting her efforts now that he's bathed in the waters of Mandalore. The use of Grogu in this was brilliant. He's truly coming into himself and the writers have given him the flexibility to express himself and in a meaningful way by digging into those minor lessons that Luke gave him back in the Book of Boba Fett. He's not beyond the point of needing help, but he can can provide support back now. The aggressive mechanical creature was a deeply unsettling and grotesque design, and proves the creativity that exists within the design department on the show, with possible references to Maul's spider-like structure that we saw back in the Clone Wars, but the multifunctional aspects to it made for an intense fight scene with Bo, and to see her make such short work of it was necessary to demonstrate her capabilities and lack of resistance to the saber, but devastating, as I do love the idea of what we got, and seeing it detach and repurpose itself into any Anything around it was fucking horrifying. The only major pushback to this entire episode, for me at least, is the appearance of Pelly and the inclusion of R5. Pelly's always been an unnatural fit to the show for me, with little to none of her comedy actually landing. A lot of her inclusions coming off feeling like a game loading screen that just allows our protagonist to move from one stop to the next. Essentially pointless, other than Mando gaining the N1 in the Book of Boba Fett, and their chemistry is almost non-existent. And that's not to the fault of Pedro or Amy Sedaris, but it's never worked for me, and I can't understand why they keep bringing her back. Then, the issue I have with R5 is it's made the entire plot of the last episode fucking unnecessary. His pursuit of IG is redundant as R5 could perform exactly the same tasks that he needed IG to do, despite being such a chicken shit. If all he needed was for someone to confirm that the air is good and the track the land, then it proves my point last week that any fucking droid could have done it. The CG was solid aside from Grogu jumping around, but everything else felt like it had practicality and resembled the work supply to the original trilogy, and I would love to see the Mythosaur in its glory just once. So overall, this was an enjoyable experience, but it still doesn't measure up to the Bad Batch just yet, especially after such an emotionally exhausting watch as this week's installment was. I can definitely say though that I'm back for the series and I'm ready to see what it's got next, and honestly I wish that this is what we started off with. That's all from me for now though, if you like this, hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more down the road, and until next time everyone take care, and may the force be with you.